Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This episode we'll be looking at the care for the Thrixopelma ocarty, one of the, um, quite frankly, I think most underrated species in the hobby. I've had three of these guys over the years. This is my latest one. The other two turned out to be male. It was an interesting situation where I had a small one that matured out male about three and a half inches or so, and another one at the time was about four inches, so I assumed that one was a female, and I was wrong a couple molts later. It molted out a mature male at around seven inches, so that one kind of threw me off. But this latest one, I'm hoping a lady. I have not done a husbandry update on these guys for quite some time since about 2019, although I did do some very early uh, classic Tom's Big Spiders husbandry videos on them back in the day. So enough of me talking, let's get into the care and husbandry for Thrixopelma ocarty as we go ahead and give mine a new home. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Thrixopelma ocarty, the Peruvian red booty or something like that i can't remember i'll put the obviously i always flash up the common name i was supposed to look it up beforehand something about its butt being red and it is they're quite pinkish beautiful spiders i don't know why they're not more popular in the hobby this is actually the third one that i kept so first off we'll talk about the setup it's getting now some people may be looking at this because there's a lot of information out there that says the t ocarty is actually a terrestrial tarantula well what we have found that in the wild they actually go semi-arboreal because they experience heavy flooding so they do come up off of the ground and i have raised three of these guys and all three of them have had more arboreal tendencies so what i've got here is kind of a semi-arboreal enclosure the substrate and the bottom because people are going to ask is the Terra Arania. I'm going to flash this up on screen so people see it. I love the stuff. I've been using it for just about everything now. I get that from the Bio Dude. And we've switched up the moss a bit. So I've got this stuff. My buddy Luis Roque, he's always sending me pictures of his enclosures and they're gorgeous. And he's got these lush green carpets of moss. So I asked him what to use. So we're going to use this for the first time in here. And as you can see, there's definitely like a beautiful naturalistic look to it. This is the moss here, the green moss. We got the cork bark. I glued some branches on it to give it a little bit of cover. The terrarania substrate. We've got some leaf litter. I just love the way leaf litter looks, and there'll be a water dish in here. Now, this is a species that obviously, if it experiences flooding, it's from a moist climate, but I've spoken to many people, and I myself, through my own experience, have found that it's not, they're not what I would call moisture dependent species. You can, once they put on some size, you can keep them a little more on the dry side. However, it doesn't hurt to add a little moisture in there, so I will keep probably the bottom layers of this moist. Keep this area in here moist, allow it to dry out a bit, and it'll be just fine. Now, taking a look at the top, this is the top that came with it. This wire mesh, everybody will ask, and I have people ask a lot, they can get their toe claws caught in wire mesh. It's more of a deal, big deal with terrestrial species. They have little, too little claws on their feet that will get caught in here and leave them dangling. I have experienced it on three occasions personally, so it can happen. I know there are folks out there saying that that is a myth. It is not a myth. Also, people will say that the arboreal species can't get caught. That is not true. I actually had a P. gigas get her toe claws caught in the top of it, and I found her dangling one day. That can lead to injury. It can lead to a leg being removed or two legs being removed. I was sent pictures once of a T. stermy that had got caught, and basically there were two legs dangling from the top. It had lost both legs and the spider could die if it bleeds out, if it gets a bad injury. So just, this is why I replaced the tops. And if you notice here, what I have is drilled plexiglass. I do this with all my exoterras. There's also a company now making replacement lids, which I need to order more. I will flash, I'll put that in the bottom. So if people want to check those out, they can be a little pricey when factored in with the cost of these, but they're just super convenient. This is just an older one I have, so I'm using that. So that is the adult setup. Right now, this is the pitiful setup that it's in, and I'm going to admonish myself for this, we originally were supposed to rehouse her before we moved, and we moved here. She went into pre-mold. That was originally a semi-arboreal enclosure. This was leaned up. She is much too big for this enclosure now, so we're going to get her out of here. Again, I'm embarrassed. She should have been moved a while ago. I mean, she's been eating well. She molted. We moved to the new house. She molted. I was giving her some time to harden up. It, she's had enough time. It's time to get her out of here and into the new one. So as a sling, she was about a half inch. We had her in a, I believe, a dram vial that we set up. When they're smaller, they will do a little bit of burrowing. So if you set them kind of terrestrially, it won't hurt. But once they start putting on some size, they tend to want to go up a bit. So here is some footage from June of 2019, where we are moving her 
from her sling enclosure that she was too big for into the one that she is in now. And as you can see, these guys are kickers. Behavior-wise, they are very, very skittish. That might be why they're not more popular. And the hairs are particularly nasty. When I shot the video here, I forgot to put my gloves on. I got haired, and that was itching for a couple weeks. So just keep that in mind. They will kick. The first thing they will usually do is stick those big strawberry red booties right up in the air. It's kind of a, hey, back off. If you don't back off, they will let the hairs fly. And I've heard the reason why they do that and the reason why they have the greenish coloration with the red bums is that they hang out on wild strawberry plants and they will basically use their bums, put them in the air, and it almost looks like camouflage. It'll look like a, a wild strawberry. Now, whether there's any truth to that, I don't know, but it sounds pretty cool. So let's get her out of here and hopefully we don't get haired to all high heaven. Uh, let me move this stuff over. I brought this stuff up to display it, and I realize i got to get it all on the way. All right, so let's get her in here. I might be able whoop, to just pick up this piece of cork bark and get her out. I have to be honest, this is why I sometimes don't like to do videos of the rehousings because trying to get the stuff under the camera doesn't always make for the most convenient situation. Yeah, see, I don't like that. Let's see what happens if I pick this up. You make this really easy for me. Well, if you want to get a shot of her, there's the booty up in the air. And next is going to be the kicking. I'm glad she did that so we could see it. Um, there's yes. the kicking. Yep. All right, so let's, let's get her off of this. Oh yeah, this is, this is just, this is all been underneath. I tried to clean it out the other day and it's all underneath the cork park. So let me go ahead, get her in this one. I'm just gonna be hair palooza. Let me favor, just grab the tray and set it on the floor. If you, well, I'll get it. What tray? This? Yeah, I'm not gonna use it. You're on the cord. Okay. Uh, let's use the little one. She can kick like crazy. No, 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 no. That was not what you were supposed to. Oh, look at those hairs. Can you see that? So there, well, hopefully we can get her out onto this so you can get some footage. She is now completely bald. But, uh, <laughs> and there are hairs everywhere. This is why I've got the long sleeves on and the gloves. Let's go ahead. You don't want to go up, so I'll get her in here. Still kicking. And she is out, so I don't know if you want, well, well, there she goes, and there's her, well, oh, there's one of the lead threads. So let me get this, well, we'll leave this and put the top on. We can get some footage of her. Yeah, there she is. She is digging away in there. She has literally just buried herself underneath there. So again, holding up to be one of the more skittish tarantulas I've kept, but they are gorgeous. I really wish we could have gotten some good images of them. I'll have to look back and see if I got any good pictures on my phone that I've taken of them because the base coloration is actually a deep bluish green and then you have that bright pink on the butt although her butt isn't going to be very bright pink for long because she kicked a majority of the hairs off you can see some of it in there but gorgeous spiders max size on these guys I've heard the females can hit seven inches or larger as far as growth rate is concerned mine have grown at a medium pace they put on some pretty good size quickly as slings and then as adults it kind of slows down a little bit I had a mature male back in the day that lived for quite a while after it matured out which is usually a sign of more of the slower growing ones but 
awesome spiders. As far as uh, temperatures are concerned, this is one of the ones I got back in the day where the temperatures in my tarantula room would dip down into the high 60s. And then in the summertime, it could hit up to 80. Nowadays in the tarantula room, the new tarantula room, it's a little bit warmer in the summer months. So it hits 80, 85 often in the summer, which we usually get better growth rate, obviously. Hotter it is, warmer it is, higher the temperatures, faster the growth rate. And then again, about that humidity or the moisture requirements as slings, I would definitely keep them moist as they get a little older. It's not quite as big of a deal, but I do err on the side of caution and always give them a little moisture in the substrate. So here we will keep those lower levels damp, allow the top to dry up a bit, and she'll always have a water dish. Now, as far as juveniles are concerned, this was what I originally had her in, which was one of the Amec boxes. I think it's right around, probably just around the... Uh, maybe two quart, we'll say a quart, nah, probably about a quart, right? Quart size, something one to two quarts with a little height would work. I also used, if you look over here, I also have kept them in one of these before. One of my older specimens was in one of these, which again, I set up, had some room on the floor, and I set up semi-arboreally. They eat great, great hunters, no problems with the eating, and... I'm trying to think if we're missing anything. Just awesome spiders. I just wish they'd be a little more popular. Every once in a while, somebody will say they saw them for sale and they were wondering about if I'd ever kept them or whatever. I have. I will put at the end of this video, we'll post up some of the older husbandry videos I did. But there we go. Thrixopelma ocrati, Peruvian flame butt. I really can't. It's something <laughs> like flame, Peruvian flame hiney, Peruvian flame abdomen, pink strawberry butt. Something like that. Awesome spiders. Definitely, if you see them, check them out. I mean, again, this is kind of my, my push to make people a little more cognizant that they're out there and hopefully some folks give them a try. So just a note on growth rate, I did have one that grew a little more quickly than the others. That was the one that matured out at three and a half inches. But the other two that I've kept have been more growing at more of a medium pace. So I'm guessing this is one of these species that if you have higher temps all year round, we're talking about high 70s, the mid 80s or so, you probably will experience faster growth rate. Also, although it comes from a very humid region, this is not, again, what I would consider to be a moisture-dependent species, but a little bit about the moisture levels. If you live in a place that the air is already humid, you don't have to worry about it as much. Sometimes just a little moist corner, even some dry substrate, and a nice full water dish will do the trick. Or if you're in an area that's much more dry or in a place that experiences cold winters where the heat kicks on and dries out the air, you're going to want to be a little more attentive, possibly moistening down more than a corner, keeping that substrate moist, and giving them an open water dish. Again, it all depends on where you live and your conditions for where you're at. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. If you'd like to check out another older rehousing and husbandry update featuring the T. Ocrity, you'll find it over here. And then I'll put something else over here. We'll figure it out later. If you take the time to comment, know that I'll respond back. Just know that it could take me a couple days. Right now it's taking me two or three days to get back to people. But you comment, I'll respond. That'll do it for this one, guys. Stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.